והיו או 19 או בין סאם פרינס 24. which chapter? chapter 4, either Mishnah 19 or 24, depends which print you have. As I said, doesn't matter the number, as long as you've got the text, the context is talking about Shmuel Akatan, Shmuel the Bittan. This is how Mishnah starts, and we'll discuss uh, what he says, and first of all, to say, why is it Shmuel Akatan? What does it mean, the little one? <laughs> Chapter 4. Chapter 4. Mishnah 19. Mishnah 18 and 19. 19. Oh, 20. 24. Oh, 24. Have you got the John? Ours are 24. Art scroll is 24. I said some text in English is 24. In the original Mishnah, is 19. As I said, it doesn't matter the number, just page to a Mishnah which starts Shmuel Akatan, Shmuel the Little. Okay. You have it. Ruben, I've got it. Yeah, yeah, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. I've got it. I can't see your face. The sign says, Roman bullshits. Yeah, now you can see me now. <laughs> okay. So Shmuel Akatan says, now why is it called Shmuel Akatan? It's interesting. Shmuel Akatan, he was not a small person, not in uh, bodily, not uh, in knowledge and so on. But he kept himself as humble and little. And he makes himself, and therefore the title was Shmuel Akatan, Shmuel the Little. Which uh, they wanted to um, say that actually they compare him to Samuel the prophet. So he is like, Akatan here is not uh, der derogatory, on the contrary. He said it's almost like the Shmuel the prophet. He himself kept, uh, kept uh, himself to be humble, and uh, which couple, there are a couple of interesting stories about humility. Um, It's uh, interesting uh, what he says. He quotes, he quotes a verse. It's actually, he didn't say anything originally. He kept on repeating a verse that comes from uh, Mishlei, Proverbs, Binfol Oivcha Al Tismach. When your enemy falls, don't rejoice. And when he stumbles, means your enemy, your enemy, let no, not your heart be glad. For pen ire Hashem veishiv po. Lest Hashem God may see it. You know, we see you rejoicing the, the fall of the stumble of the friend. You know, when he sees you happy with the with the uh, fall down of your friend, Hashem, it will be ill in his eyes. He find it ill. They shiv my love upon, and he will turn away his wrath from him. 
and which means according we see in the in the uh, commentary he will turn away the rust the rust from him and remove it to you and Hashem will be angry with you. As I said, there is nothing original that Shmuel says, but he keep, kept on repeating it and he lived according to this principle. The Mishnah actually is a continuation The following the mission that we learned last week, been following the Chal Tismach, when he say Al Tire, Al Al Tishtadeli Rod BeKalkalato, don't make an effort to see your friend stumbling, failing, and here it goes on the same idea. Uh, strengths me, reaffirm me. Don't rejoice when your friend fails, even if it says, even if he's a wicked person. Right, can I ask a question? Why are you translating it as friend? Because when I read it, yes, his enemy. I said, what did I say? A friend? You are saying friend, but no, I no, see the uh, translation. I'm sorry. Enemy. When I apologize. Enemy I apologize. It's an enemy. Oyevcha. I don't know. It came out. Oyevcha is uh, your, en your enemy. Even if he is a wicked person, which generally... A person when you see when you are cross or with somebody is not your friend, your enemy, so you just happy to see that the guy is uh, failing and uh, falling and uh, suffering. Comes Shlomo Melech King Solomon and Shmuel adopts this in his life. By repeating, don't rejoice if you see even your enemy. And now we we'll say, why? What is the idea here? And I say, and I say, it can be the fail of your uh, enemy can be either physically stumbling, falling in the street, or stumbling. It can be physically, it can be spiritually, it can be own kind of thing. He has a bad uh, uh, time, he's sick, uh, he's uh, losing his money and, uh, and which is naturally a person feels, one second. Get up, Shalom. כן. טוב, בסדר, על הקהל קבלנו, אנחנו ממשיכים לשתיים וחצי. אוקיי. אוקיי, בסדר. אוקיי, בסדר, בסדר. Right. Sorry. So it's just a natural thing that uh, we, everybody is a very uh, egoist. And he likes to see a guy that, uh, that you hate, or even if he was doing to you something wrong, and you say, ah, good, now he get it. He deserves it and so on. He says, you must not rejoice and you should not feel so safe that you are 
greater and you are a righteous person and the other one is uh, guilty and so on. And the question is, could be different. Some say um, it can be even a, a non-Jew. Not only uh, Amman and Mordechai afterwards, when uh, Amman got the degrade, degradation Bahashvorosh that he told him to be to lead the horse where Mordechai was uh, uh, riding on, and it says that Mordechai said something which seemed to be that like saying to him, now you you got it what you deserve. And Amman said to him, don't you say in your, uh, in your uh, holy books that you must not rejoice when your enemy fails? So you know, it's, it is taken according to that, that even in a goy, on the other end, there is a, another another uh, verse which says Bavod Reshaim Rina when wicked people uh, 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 an occasion to, to rejoice. So it seems to be here a contradiction. Yeah, so some there is dif difference if you are talking about somebody that is very very wicked is different. If he's also wicked, then you must rejoice. Seems to seems to rejoice when it tells how uh, uh, Haman and his sons were all, all hung. It, it seems a very Joyful language. Uh, I can't hear it. Repeat. I say, the, in the book of Esther, when it tells how Haman yeah. is hung and his ten sons are hung, it is really sounding very, well, certainly sounding joyful and, and, and very, very pleased. No, where Aman, when he, he was uh, uh, punished, when Hashvaro uh, said to him, you, when it was the, in, the, in the story, when uh, Esther begged Hashvaro and he said, who is the one that made this uh, decree? And he says, Haman. <laughs> And uh, and uh, Aaron came at that time, and Aaron and Hashemah uh, said to him, "Ask him, what would you do to a person that you want to give him some uh, uh, praise or a medal?" He said. So Aaron was thinking that he was talking about himself, about Aaron. He said, "One of the ministers should take the should ride." On, on the horse, the person that uh, you want to give him some uh, oh, yeah. a medal, and the one of the ministers should be the, the to lead the horse. And the Hashvara said to him, "You, you the, the judgment, do it to Mordechai. Take Mordechai to uh, to uh, ride on the." Uh, um, also the king, and you were the one that you have to go to lead him, and this is what it was. So there is in the Gemore a kind of a discussion that uh, Mordechai said to him, like, uh, showed this, to say, no, oh, you deserve what you get. And uh, Amman said to him, but doesn't he say that you're allowed to 
rejoice when your enemy fails. I just mentioned for sure that there is a possibility that this can even apply to, to a non-Jew, that you see a non-Jew that you hate, still when you see him failing, don't rejoice. I'm just putting possibilities. It's, uh, but the main thing, I think, what I, uh, I mentioned, that there is a posuk, a verse, when uh, wicked people got lost, and uh, then it is happiness in the world. It's, uh, it's uh, an occasion to to rejoice. How does it how does it reconcile with what we say when your enemy fails? Don't rejoice. So I think it's uh, very simple. When we're talking about generally to the world, when wicked people be got lost, it's got for the world. But when it comes to personal thing, you have a personal thing against a person that you hate, you should not use it as an occasion when he fails, when he uh, got in trouble, you should not use it as your private occasion to rejoice. And what is really, when I say, even if he's a wicked person, the commented to say, look, even if a wicked person, we are not, we don't want them to, to be punished. We want them to do tshuva. So give a chance. Maybe if you talk to, to him, maybe without, if you just uh, making a big, a big uh, simcha party and so on, you just create more hatred. Our attitude is try, we try to bring, bring a person to be better. And uh, yeah, so so he said you mustn't rejoice. And the, the continuation of the verse, lest Hashem will see, and he will turn away his wrath from him, and uh, put it you this this is not it's not clear in the verse the verse only says Hashem will um, may Hashem, uh, lest Hashem will see how you rejoice and Hashem dislike the way the, your attitude and he will forgive the person that you uh, hate and he will be cross with you. So let's discuss this. It's wrong in the eye of Hashem that you use, as I said, it's a, a personal way of hatred and like you feel it's a revenge, personally, you've got a revenge on it. Hashem doesn't want it. Hashem wants to see on the contrary that do whatever you can, that he should improve, not just make him even to be worse. And, and uh, if you rejoice, then Hashem start to think about you. Why are you such a great tzaddik? that you feel that the, the other person deserves to be punished, then he was looking into your ways. And maybe he will find you are not such a great sadic, right, uh, pious person as you make yourself to be. And he will be cross with you. 
generally, the, the very interesting uh, statement by the rabbis, when the Egyptians uh, drowned, I mean, we just what celebrated not long ago, uh, Pesach, and uh, this was celebration with the Mitzrim, the Egyptian, were drowned. The Chazal say, or Rebbe say, Malachi Asheret Ayu Amurim Shira, the angels above, they actually song, sang a song to show happiness that the Egyptian now got the punished. And Hashem rebuked them. And he says, Masei Adai Tobim Bayam Vatem Aurim Shira? My products, the Egyptians are also products of God. The whole world are products of Hashem. They are uh, uh, made by God. God made them. The Egyptians also God made, made them. And he says, my deeds, my results of my deeds are uh, drowning in the water and you are making a song, you are singing. So what is the, the idea here, the message? Hashem is not happy with anybody to be destroyed because Hashem made them. Made everybody. Yes, Hashem is very uh, angry when the person misbehaves. And such to Hashem, Hashem has to deal with it. But not you, as a human being, all the angels. That um, You have to be sorry when you see the person like that, that Hashem made and produced he behaves this way. Rab, and this is what the... Yeah. This is a very difficult concept for me. Because it, it, what? this is a difficult concept for me. Because you have to look at it. If you look at Hitler, must we not feel hatred towards Hitler? Killing six million Jews plus millions of other people. Yes, you can say God created Hitler. But look what he did. Do we say that God then must do what he has to do to Hitler? The point is that he was the most evil man and we have surely entitled to rejoice at his death, his killing. Yeah, look, it's a very valid point which uh, you, you mentioned. Uh, yes, Hitler, Nazi, all there should be punished and we uh, we daven that the Marshalim at Yetikva, the Chola Mirim, we are asking God. But it, it could be to say uh, that there are extreme cases, maybe, uh, that you you are permitted, like, uh, as you mentioned, like Hitler or whatever. Uh, it could be that this extreme case. But I'm talking about on the ordinary, yes, and then usually you have among your community, uh, even uh, some of the non-Jew, it's a personal thing that in me, maybe there are certain things. You don't, should not build up a feeling that you are happy when somebody else fails. And God uh, will deal with him whatever he deal, whatever he deserves, but you as a person don't become 
this is what the message. Personally, you don't think, ah, yeah, yeah, he deserves it. Like you make yourself, uh, you are a good, you, you know how to judge and you know where uh, a person is behaves or misbehaves. You must uh, be a little bit uh, more, more uh, uh, sensitive. Yes, I'm, uh, even if, he, which is not easy, but this is what the Torah wants us to be, to develop sensitivity for others, even if we, they may be mistreated us. I agree with you that it could be with the Hitler and Nazi and so on. This is a very extreme case. And uh, I don't know uh, how to say that uh, if uh, they get the Mapole, we, we pray that Hashem should uh, punish them. But we personally should not develop a personal um, hatred, even, which is not easy. Why? But interesting why he said, first of all, I said, you don't know how righteous you are to be able to condemn somebody, to say he deserves what he stumbled. The second point which the commentators say, by you rejoicing is is a folly. You cause this person to suffer more and his suffering could be uh, could bring maybe an atonement to this person that he doesn't need, doesn't deserve uh, to be at the to atonement, but you are causing him that that he gets the punishment through you, and therefore we said you become by by making by rejoicing you actually put more the attention about yourself to be build up yourself as as I say the tzaddik is a great man and so and and it's a very very interesting that this Shmuel Akatan the Shmuel the little not only he preached but he lived according to this value. And uh, there is a very interest, interesting story in the Gemara, I think, in Baruches. The rabbis who suffered, I mean, the time they suffered in the Romans' time from uh, people like informers that they uh, even uh, they they brought stories to the uh, Romans how the Jews behave or misbehave, and uh, and uh, obviously brought a lot of suffering to the Jews. And the Gemara says that the rabbis at that time wanted to compile a plea to Hashem against these people. And this is what we say in the Shmon Esrei, in Amida. We ask God that this uh, uh, kind of people, the informers, let me take an English seedle as I told you, I forgot my English and I forgot my Hebrew. I remain without a language. Yeah. 
בעמידה. דאבל שלי טיימס א דיי, ולמלשין אם אל תהיי תקווה. For slanderers, let there be no, and may all weakness, weak, wickedness perish in an instant, and may all your enemies be cut down speedily. May you speedily uproot, smash, cast down, and humble the wanton sinners speedily in our days. ברוך אתה השם שובר אויבים אחרי הזידי. And this is, I don't know if it is the translation exact, but talking about, first of all, we are talking about these slanders, we feel suffering from them, and therefore we ask Hashem to handle it. We got about a minute left. Yeah, so, so just interesting, who compiled this blessing, Shmuel HaKatan? The Gemara says, who can compile it? We need a person to compile it that hasn't got a self-interest, that he can feel that he does it for, this, uh, true, for the truth, for God and so on, not because of his uh, personal... Uh, Hatred. And this is Shmuel HaKatan. It, be, it, it befits the statement that we read in the Mishnah that this is the way of Shmuel HaKatan. So we finish with this. And Dimir Tzashem, please God, we'll meet again on Tuesday. And uh, those that attend the on Thursday, the same time will be your 8 o'clock, my 9 o'clock. In the meantime, have to continue to have the good days. Hopefully that you'll have light and water and whatever you need. Thank you. Thank Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 We finish in the right time, Ruben. Yeah, finish the right time. Okay. Thank, thank you, Rabbi. Thank okay. you, Rabbi. All, all you be well. Nice to see you. Okay. See you again. I don't know. Some of the guys I missed. I don't know if everybody, anybody. I don't know if Felicia is here.